Welcome to The Leap Stories. And my guest today is one fabulous woman, a serial entrepreneur, J.B. Owen. Hi, J.B. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hello, darling. Thank Hello. you for being with us. Very excited to be here. And my first question to you, as um, I ask all of our guests, is if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do, in your own definition, and basically share it with our audience. Yeah, so I'm a designer, been a designer since I was about nine years old. I started sketching and designing cute little things for my Barbies and my dolls, and always enjoyed designing, and so mm -hmm. even now I still work as a designer. I'm a mom of two, and mm -hmm. I've been sort of traveling the world the last year, sort of adventuring and doing my business um, globally and mm -hmm. sort of nomadically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And touching upon like you being like a designer from early days, mm -hmm. that took you on a journey as well, from the filming industry yes. and then setting up your business, so could you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, so my first business, I was nine, I actually started a business where I was making little jewelry for um, ladies to wear and I was selling it at the local pub down the street to the men to buy for their girlfriends and I really love the process of making money and I love the process of designing so that set me on this big journey of being an entrepreneur so for many years throughout all of my school I, I made jewelry I created clothing I was always making something and creating mm -hmm. little businesses I thought it was so fun to be designing and making money at the same time so I was really bit by the entrepreneurial bug at a very young oh, wow. age yes what happened so I stayed in design, I became a designer, I went to university and studied design, I worked with some designers in Toronto and in, uh, in Canada, I had my own clothing label for many years and then I was very fortunate to work in the film business so I started working in film and the wardrobe and the costume department. Wow! And very exciting doing television and film and commercials and working with really big celebrities wow. on big budget films uh -huh. and worked my way up to being a set supervisor so that was you know the person who was sort of managing and, mm -hmm. and organizing all the costumes. Costumes. Mm. And when I finished costume design because I got pregnant, mm -hmm. I opened up a kids' clothing company because when my son was born, I was like, wow, I really need to make some fun clothes for boys because yeah. I kind of don't have a lot out there yeah. in the world yeah. compared to what girls have. Yeah. I started that company in my basement mm -hmm. and in my first season I had 60 stores and within four years I was doing over a million dollars and had 600 stores. Wow. Yeah, it was a very, very, very successful company. And, you know, overwhelming at the same yeah. time to have such exponential growth. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what, do you, what is it you do today? Uh, well, today, I mean, I don't do that business anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, part of my leap story is I, I reached a point in that business where I was burnt out, mm -hmm. pretty much broken, um, tired, exhausted, overworked, mm -hmm. unhappy. Uh, very, very sort of sad in what I was doing, even though it was my dream job. It had gone from doing what I loved into doing what was making money. Mm. I had another child, and so my kids were being raised by the nanny. Mm. I was traveling to China five times a, um, a year, and I had really sort of um, gotten into the loop of mm. you know just working, making money, buying things, mm. and. I had the most money and the most things and the biggest house and the nicest cars mm. that I'd ever had in my whole life and I was very, very unhappy. Could you say that you had all the material possessions that most people dream about but that did not make you feel Yeah, good? absolutely. I mean, there was very little that I wanted that I didn't have mm. and yet what did it matter? What mm. For me, it, you know, I had come home to a, a full closet or, you know, a new purse or or mm. whatever, this big house, and yet it was empty in heart mm. and soul and spirit. How would you define a leap? Well, sometimes, you know, I say, like, it's a bit like a, a God smack. It's sort of yeah. that moment where you, you know, really, you get, you get it. You really mm. get that moment where this is it. I need to do something different. And mm. I need to take the leap from where I am into where I really want yeah. to be and what my, really, yeah. my life was designed to be. Mm. Instead of this trajectory of this is what I think I should have and this is mm. what I think I should say and this is what I think I should look like and this mm. is what I think I should do. It's that leap that you say... This is not working. Yeah. This is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed mm. to be over here doing this. And that's mm. really where my heart is. That was that moment of a 
called Smack, as you just mentioned. Absolutely. So I had been in China for 21 days. I had been working, and the truth is I didn't really want to come home. I've been trying to find an excuse mm. to stay there and work longer. But I did fly home on the 8th of December, and I remember it very profoundly because it was just a few days before Christmas. Mm. I flew into town. There was no one at the airport to meet me. Mm. I took a taxi home. And I walked into my house with no decorations or no Christmas festivities, mm. and my children were laughing with the nanny. I could hear them in the living room, and I, I felt very jealous. I felt very disconnected, and I, I snuck upstairs uh, so they didn't see me, and mm. I went to bed in the guest room, and I had been sleeping in the guest room for almost two years now. My husband and I were completely not together uh, emotionally. Mm -hmm. We were in the same house, fighting through uh, this, you know, the process. He had had left his business to come and work for me, which was a disaster for our marriage and our, and our kinship. And I remember going to sleep thinking, you know, oh, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I've been flying, I'll just see the kids later. And I, I remember feeling like it was really embarrassing that I didn't even want to see my own children after I'd been gone for almost a month. But I was so deflated and I was so disconnected and I was so, I didn't have anything wonderful to show them in my heart. And that night, my daughter woke up in the middle of the night at 3 in the morning and she called the nanny's name and cried and cried and wanted the nanny. And I was in the other room and it, I, I just cried and I knew that that was the moment that I needed to make a change in my life. Mm -hmm. If you were to, to basically mention for our audience one lesson that you learned out of that, or any of our yeah. leave stories, that yeah, one absolutely. thing that still fuels you to, or carries you today and will in the future probably. Yeah, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about currency, you know, I, I mm. live my life trying to to be wealthy, to have this currency mm. of success, and it was really a man's definition of success, it was really someone else's currency. Mm, yeah. You know, my currency was, I wanted my children to love me, I wanted to have a good marriage, I wanted to be a beautiful, loving, caring wife, mm. I wanted to have a successful business, but not at the expense of, you know, my health, I was overweight, I was unhealthy, I was sick, I had... Very, I had a, a very, very horrible back issue that I couldn't walk at times, couldn't sit on a plane at times. Yeah, from the outside, mm -hmm. it was terrible in so many ways. If anyone just like looking back, if it was so obvious that yeah. there's so much not working out. And what I realized is, you know, my currency is not necessarily the numbers in my bank account. It really was, you know, where was I with my kids? Where was I with my husband? Where was I with my friends and my family? And I really alienated myself to be the successful person. And it became about the car, the, you know, the things. And, and that really was an important factor to me. And I tell women all the time, what is your currency of success? It's not anybody else's, it's yours. What matters to you? What, what do you value? What do you see as, as a really, truly important high degree of, you know, what makes you feel like you succeeded? And what is your currency today? Well, today it's my kids. You know, that moment when my daughter was calling out the, the nanny's name, I thought to myself, I've lost, I've lost my child. Like, mm. she, we're, we're going to just be those, you know, the kid and that parent that are just on two different mm. planes. Yeah. The teenage years, and like, I just was like, <laughs> seeing it all already, you know? Yeah. So, it suddenly became like, all I wanted was my daughter to run into my arms again. I wanted my daughter to value me. I wanted my daughter to sit with me and hold hands. I wanted my daughter to have value connection. Me. That really important connection. And my son was a bit older at the time, and he was five. And I thought, you know, like I want him to see what it's like to be a great father and be a great role model in the family because, you know, he had seen his dad at his worst because our marriage was at its worst. So my currency of success suddenly became my relationship with my kids, my health, because mm -hmm. I was so terribly unhealthy, and you know, my happiness and a sense of peace and ease because mm -hmm. you know, my business had become like a driving, stressful, driven yeah. thing. And obviously a successful relationship. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing this thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you. You know, my really my passion is honestly is to really empower women and really mm -hmm. be teaching and encourage other women who are going through the same thing or something similar that, you know, women mm. are womanhood is really important to us and really mm. vital and we as women have so much to offer and we don't need to do it like men, we don't mm. need to have success, we need to have our own passion and success, our own desire for what matters to us mm. and, you know, now I'm really on a journey of empowering women to be great parents, to be great friends, to be great independent uh, individuals because they can do it. I'm a single mom yeah. and I've been traveling the yeah. world with my kids and since anyway, August last year, yeah, right? so 10 months of traveling. 10 months of traveling. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you can do it. People told yeah. me I couldn't do it, and I want to tell you, you can yeah. do anything you dream of. You can absolutely do anything. Your, you know, your, your life is designed by you. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. And thank you. Thank you guys for watching till the next sleep story from Barcelona. Yeah, take, a <laughs> take a leap. Take a leap. Take a leap. Bye. <laughs>